Tonight is the future of energy a blast from the past? We're heading underground to discover if it's time to reopen our old coal mines. This is what we're going to be looking for, black gold. Leaving the East Midlands for good, why record numbers are selling up and shipping out. I don't think anything will keep me here, to be perfectly honest now. And poet Benjamin Zephaniah gives up the big city for Lincolnshire. Some people think it's no place for a reggae-loving Rastafarian like me, but I disagree. With surprising stories from the East Midlands, I'm Mari Ashby and this is Inside Out. In the dash for gas, most East Midlands pits were closed or mothballed, including this one at Snibston in Leicestershire. But now energy prices are on the rise. Coal is being viewed as black gold once more. So could King Coal make a comeback? We sent a former miner, Les Rain, on a mission to find out. Silver Hill in Nottinghamshire, the highest point in the county. I remember when it used to be all coal mines around here. You get a good perspective from up here. This statue is here to remind us of the many pits that used to exist in Nottinghamshire and the thousands of miners who used to work in them. And I was one of them. In the 70s, those of us who grew up in Ollerton still thought the local pit offered job security for life, as it had done for generations of families. I worked for 15 years on the coal face, but in 1994 we were told that the pit we were so proud of would close. It's probably the best pit in the country, without bar none. We've gone through industrial relations problems, we've, we have none of that now. We're, we're everybody from, from the workforce right to the top, we're all pulled together and there's just no reason at all why they should, why, why they should close Ollerton. Our protests against pit closures didn't work. We were told mining British coal was too expensive, but a lot's changed in the world of energy in 14 years. The Inside Out team have asked me to explore whether King Coal can make a comeback. Turns out what we have in the East Midlands is crucial to those decisions. I don't have to look far to find evidence of a changing energy landscape. Something extraordinary is happening at Harworth Colliery in North Nottinghamshire. Something I thought I'd never see. It's 14 years since I last went down a pit. Feels like yesterday. A kilometre underground at Harworth. It's a hive of activity. It's a massive construction, is this? I mean, this has got to be made. Massive. Conveyors are being rebuilt, tracks relayed. This deep pit is almost certain to reopen, yet two years ago they closed off the tunnels and put it into mothballs. This is where it's all going to begin again. 5,000 metres that way is where the coal is going to be extracted from. This is what we're going to be looking for, black gold. The reason for all this activity is the price of coal on world markets. It's more than doubled. So I want to ask the Chief Executive of UK Coal a question that's close to my heart. With hindsight, um, that really wonderful thing, wouldn't it have been a good idea maybe to have mothballed some of the other, pit, uh, the other shafts in other areas rather than completely get rid of them? As you say, hindsight is a wonderful thing. Um, had, had anybody forecast uh, the sort of change in the world economics for coal, then it conceivably some more of those shafts could have been saved and saved into mothball rather than closed entirely. The mines that did close were the more geologically challenged and progressively as prices have improved geology can be overcome but it really is down to the seismic change in the world marketplace for coal. Of course resuming mining at Harworth is one thing however looking at new reserves opening up new fields is something quite different. That's a question they're pondering at the British Geological Survey, right here in the East Midlands. They're global experts in mineral reserves. Governments across the world beat a path to their door. 
So where better to get some informed answers? The core sample room here reminds me of that last scene in Raiders of the Lost Ark. With a lot of boxes, what exactly are they? What you're looking at here is the core store here at the British Geological Survey at Keyworth in Nottinghamshire. There's about 120 miles of core here relating to the geology of England and Wales. About 15% of that is related to coal exploration. So that will tell us how much coal we've got in the East Midlands? Well, that's quite a hard question to answer, but if you come over here, I'll try and give you some ideas. OK, Les, this is um, a map which shows something of the coal resources in, in the East Midlands. And what it shows is, in the west of the region, the coal is at the surface, so we can mine it by surface mining method, by open cast methods. But as we go eastwards, the coal dips underneath other younger rocks. We can't give a precise figure by any means, but what this shows is that under a vast swathe of the region, there are very, very large coal resources, millions and millions of tonnes. But new deep mines cost a billion pounds, so most of our new coal is likely to come from surface mining in the west. And that's exactly what they're planning at Smalley in Derbyshire. Apparently, there's a million tons of coal under my feet. But I've come here to meet some people who think it should stay there. Hi guys, how are you doing? Uh, you don't look very safe up there. I'll meet downstairs. <laughs> Hi, how are you doing? All right. Yeah. You got down the protesters right explained now. they'd occupied the smaller site to stop the mining machinery moving in. And their big concerns weren't only the greenhouse gases produced by burning coal. The main issue for me is that UK Coal want to come and take all of the coal out of here as quickly and cheaply as possible so it can be burnt as soon as possible so they can make the profits now. And I just don't think that reflects any of the interests of people in general. People living near coal deposits have got a problem. The government has woken up to the dangers of relying heavily on imported energy. That means in some cases they've overruled local planning authorities to provide more British coal for the market. Peter Wright and his partner Rachel rented this house from UK Coal until February. We're a small community trying to save this beautiful countryside and you know the government's sort of got involved and they've overridden Derbyshire County Council so basically the government's not listening to anything what the council want or the local people. Since being eight nine years old living in Ena herself growing up in Ena climbing up these trees climbing up the trees walking around knowing the farm when it was at the back um, the, there were still owls nesting in the same trees then that we saw as what there is today where are they going to go? UK coal though say the owls will be safe and when they restore the site, it will be a better wildlife habitat than before. The facts are that a lot of our electricity still comes from coal. Ratcliffe on Saw Power Station burns 812 tonnes of the stuff every hour of every day. Remember the site where we met the protesters? There was a million tonnes of coal there They will burn that here in three months. And coal is such a carbon-dense fuel, that means that every year, Ratcliffe pumps out 8.6 million tonnes of carbon dioxide to add to our global warming woes. If coal has a future in our energy mix, it must clean up its act. Energy expert Mike Stevenson is researching how to do just that by capturing the CO2 from power stations and burying it under the North Sea. This is storage that's been done since 1996 and we've we're burying about one million tonnes a year and nothing has ever leaked. So how soon are we going to be doing this? It's something that we could be able to get going on a fairly large scale by perhaps 10 or 15 years from now. But this is not a panacea. It won't solve the world's problems. It might buy us time to develop renewables in order to generate the electricity we need. In the end, this is what it's all about. Keeping the lights on and the price, we're prepared to pay for that. When I started this journey, I had romantic ideas that new coal might mean new coalfield communities. 
Now I know that's unlikely to happen. I've learned there's still plenty of coal down there, but getting at it is going to upset some people. And I've discovered that turning coal into a cleaner source of energy isn't going to happen overnight. Never thought I'd hold one of these ever again. The question was, can coal make a comeback? My answer is yes, but not on a scale that we saw when I started out in mining. However, the challenge ahead is enormous.